That's right. Hey guys, we're now, Madam Kovic. And I'm Bruce Kreese. Get the hot Monday. Whoa. Okay. Joel. Yeah, I can't. I got the Clap. Clap. All right, come on, let's do this. And today's we're going about Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, and how it is the greatest game ever made Woo! this year. Uh, even though Konami has apparently tossed Metal Gear series creator Hideo Kojima out on a stealthy ass, Ouch. his most recent game is snapping necks on Metacritic. <laughs> Good line, Lars. <laughs> uh, Metal Gear. Okay, so the people love Metal Gear. Woo! Yes, we get it. Uh, something, something, Revolver Ocelot, more jokes, other things, let's just get over to it. So, review embargoes <laughs> lifted from Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain yesterday in Boy, are those numbers high. Lawrence, hit him. Okay, so right now the game is sitting at a 96 on whoa, Metacritic. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that's an aggregate of 17 individual reviews that all say the game is just a, a friggin' masterpiece. Uh, that makes Metal Gear Solid V a tie for the highest rated game of the year so far. Wow. Tying the PC release of Grand Theft Auto V. Ooh, that's good. It's right. a good year for fives. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's a high five for the folks at home. Go home! Now, yeah, I, okay. I know, it's true. Now, aggregate reviews tend to slip a bit in the few days following their debut. We're not sure why, but early reviews always tend to be more positive. Uh, still, the critical consensus is that this game rules. Yeah, IGN gave the game a perfect 10 out of 10, wow. saying that, quote, every minute of gameplay detail has true purpose. In the review, IGN specifically praises the success of Metal Gear Solid V's open world, saying that it's almost overwhelming in terms of the freedom it affords and the number of concepts it expects you to grasp. Uh, oddly, the only aspect IGN's review finds lacking in MGS5 is its story, calling it insubstantial and woefully underdeveloped by comparison. This is a strange about face from Metal Gear Solid 4, which was so story focused that most PlayStation 3s would just go into power saving mode during one of the game's longer cutscenes. They got up to like 45 minutes. But it was ridiculous. Uh, how long with the cutscenes total in the game was like 90 minutes or two oh, hours? No, it was like nine hours. More than that? The end credits were like 90 minutes. Well, thank yeah. God I never played You that thought game. that was an ending? Hell no, here's Big Boss. Uh, GameSpot also gave the game a perfect score, saying that it's the best in the series due to the depth to its gameplay and volume in content. Hmm. They don't find similar problems with the game's story either, oh. saying that there has never been a Metal Gear game that's so consistent in tone, daring in subject matter, and so captivating in presentation. Game Informer said about published one of the lower scores for the game, which is still really high at 9.25. Garbage, I want my yeah. money back. <laughs> uh, they call the game, quote, a testament to the importance of taking risks. Oh, geez. Uh, specifically wow. praising all the elements of the Phantom Pain that diverge from series expectations, which is, you know, largely a little more linear, a little more story focused. Yeah. Similar to IGN, Game Informer found that the, quote, hands-off approach to storytelling is disappointing. Uh, finding most of the narrative crammed into optional audio logs instead of the series standard long-winded cutscenes. And I'm, I'm giving a, a that clap sounds, for that. That actually sounds yeah, better. Yeah, I'd freaking, much rather that. Thank you. I'm a big-time Metal Gear fan, and those things need to be toned down. Still, the review praises the game's open world and specifically calls out the freedoms that it allows the player. As Game Informer describes, that it's not as simple as going all-out stealth or aggression. Each operation is a playground that encourages you to experiment with the tools you have available. As a whole, it seems opinions differ when it comes to the method and pacing of the story, but almost everyone agrees that the game is really, really fun to play. That's great. So it sounds like it's a fun game. Yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, that's not to say the game is without its temporary controversies, though. Oh no, the controversies. Tell me more. <laughs> Lawrence? Yeah, uh, so the online portion of the game isn't active yet. Which is kind of a bummer because it sounds pretty cool. They put out a really long gameplay video out of it, Gamescom. Yeah. Basically, you build your own base and then you can invade other people's bases and defend yours when they invade yours. All sounds pretty neat, but so that's not live yet. It goes live on September 1st when the game releases. Okay. But there is confusion about how exactly that mode will be accessed. It revolves around FOBs, which sounds profane, but it actually stands for Forward Operating Base. All the kids in Springfield are FOBs. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so this is a naval base you can build with and customize with something called MB coins, or Mother Base coins. Uh, you have to buy basically a plot of ocean with these magical glittering MB coins, and you can buy them with real money, what? but reviewers haven't found a way to earn those in the game yet without oh. spending money. Yeah, uh, Konami has said in the past that you can actually earn this currency in-game somewhere, there has but to be, right? because of the way this is working, we don't know how that works yet. Got it. Okay, but it, there has to be. Mm -hmm. There has to be something in the game. You have to play one of Konami's pachinko machines. Yep, that's you fly to Japan and just do a little bit of that. The only statement made on the issue we could find came from Konami Computer Entertainment Japan, senior producer Kenichiro Imaizumi. Song. He replied to a question posed on Twitter saying that, quote, you can make money by completing missions on single campaign mode. There are other ways to make money as well. Like there come work for Konami. Uh, oh wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's a slave. It's slave. Uh, yeah, except GameSpot reports that in their review experience, they haven't earned a single MB coin. Okay, well, so, that's, you know, we're, we're getting there. Wait, wait, well, not out yet. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I'll wait, hold back, but maybe these will start to be awarded when the game comes out on September 1st, right. when the online service launches. I hope so. Nah, we'll see. Yeah, 
sounds like the typical DLC setup. You can play for hours to earn magic Metal Gear coins or spend five bucks and have a glistening fortress with laser turrets and atom bomb launchers. That's fun. Uh, we'd like to get some real concrete info about this, but it sounds like the game is good enough even without factoring the multiplayer. That's really cool. Uh, not the PvP. It seems like this is its own weird little yeah, yeah, mode because yeah, yeah. there is a PvP mode, but they haven't touched that much. So. Yeah. so there you have it. What's most likely Hideo Kojima's finest Metal Gear is the best game in the series, according to 17 dudes on the internet. There might be a woman Dude there. Dudettes. Or dudettes. Lawrence, were there any women who uh, reviewed the game? You know, you know, it's all written reviews. I'm going to be that guy and assume that they were all dudes. Whoa! Uh, I can't wait for the sixth one. No, no, no. He, uh, he left. He no, left. He's, oh. Yeah, he's done. He's, he's going to make a new game called Pletal Pier. Oh! Uh, there is this cool game called, coming out called Silent Hills, though. What about David Hayter? Yeah, Adam, what about your crazy theory that David Hayter's just gonna show up out of nowhere? Apparently, okay, look, according to game trailers in the review, they said, there was a big twist that had a lot of us stroking each other off, and I was like, um... <laughs> Is that what he said? Well, I, well, first of all, I hate when people tell you there's a twist, yeah. because now you're going to be expecting you're a twist. For a twist. What's so, the twist in this episode of The No, Adam? I was never here. Please like and subscribe for more info on Silent Hills. Dun 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 Snake! Snake! <laughs> I, I saw a guy toking in his car. I sold my bike. Toking? Well, you, you, had a, you was toking. Let's go toking. We're going on a journey. It, Come with me. That's yeah. why they call it token. <laughs> I sold my electric bike this weekend. Pretty cool. Way to go. I did it. I used that money to buy a new phone. Way to go. Neato. You were telling me this. Like, if you own a nice coat, whatever, and it's like, you bought this coat for $300, and then you're trying to get rid of it, and you try to sell it for $300. No one's gonna fucking buy it for $300. They're gonna buy it for $50, because yeah. it's worthless now. Go to Santa Monica, see how much it would cost to rent a bike worse than yours for as long as you had that bike. Mm, there you go. Good point. And, and that, then you made profit. Now you're making profit. Now you're making hundreds of dollars. Like, printing cash. Well, I mean, 